Nigerian President Bola Tinubu signed student loan bill into law. And Bola Tinubu, in his Democracy Day speech, says those who cannot accept defeat do not deserve the joy of victory. This is Post Politics. I am Messi Boko. The President Bola Tinubu on Monday signed into law a bill to establish student loan fund to provide interest-free loans to Nigerians seeking higher education. It was sponsored by the immediate past Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila. The bill was introduced in 2016 as part of measures towards addressing the funding gaps in the country's tertiary education subsector. Tinubu, in his manifesto as presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC, promised to pursue the establishment of education bank towards enhancing access to quality education at tertiary level. The president of the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnic, Anderson Nzeribe, expressed concern over several issues as much as the high rate of unemployment in Nigeria. Now, to make sense of this conversation, we have joining us Tunji Abdullah Hamid, a legal practitioner, and Richard Wakacha, a professor of law in River State University. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank Great you for having me. All right, then, uh, let's quickly start, uh, start off. I I'd like to start off with uh, Tunji. What do you really make of this, you know, student loan act? Yeah, uh, for me, the, 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 the law... Uh, is it, it, it's, it's good on paper as far as I'm concerned uh, because I say so because um, I am one of those who believe that law is not our lack of law is not our problem in this country. Our problem is implementation of those laws. So if you talk about uh, the, the intention of those who made the law and what the law is meant to achieve, it's a good one. Then when you look at how, how, whether it will be it, it's, it's capable of being implemented or whether it will be implemented to to satisfy the, the desire of those who want to be, uh, I, I will have my doubts as to whether that can be put through because there are so many obstacles that I or sign that I, that I can raise regarding that uh, bill. Firstly, how do we determine who and who that will be entitled? Uh, I'm aware they mentioned that uh, it must be uh, any less than 500,000 naira or 500,000 naira uh, 500, uh, per year. How do we know? How, do we have enough data to determine who and who are earning those piece of months? How do we determine who, who are the beneficiaries? Where would they be paid back? And when, when they're going to pay back, how, where is the job? Why would they get the job to pay back? What are the responsibility of those? How, how will it be paid back? So you see, I don't want to, I, I, want it, I don't want the situation whereby this will also go the way of uh, uh, other, other, other uh, such uh, 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 programs like, uh, uh, what's it called? This other program, the Donnie Jonathan, the, the last uh, administration, that, that, that you just see them sent. They trade, send money out, trade, trade that money, uh, Shopee, and all those uh, money who have been sent as uh, shared to people uh, and they uh, say that it's being given to them, but we're not seeing the result of it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's good on paper when you talk about the law itself, but uh, my worry is about the implementation of it, whether they'll be able to, uh, there, there is foundation for the implementation of that law is, is what is what, what worries me. So I don't know what, what they've put on ground as foundation to be able to, because there is no that proper data. That is the basic one there. No proper data. No, 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 no means of knowing who and who are qualified to be to be. I'm not talking about whether you apply or this and that. Why do we verify the information given to them? How do you ascertain that this particular loan, uh, student loan, will not go the way of scholarship? Because I know in Nigeria we have scholarship and scheme that is meant for people who are who are not who are not uh, uh, buoyant. But this scholarship are being given to of the, the people in government and the rich and those who are rich and the leaders. So that's my worry. That's the, that's the area where I am worried about. If we talk about paper, uh, the law itself on paper, it's a very good one. But in, in terms of whether it will be implemented uh, the way it is, I have my doubts. Uh, well, Wokocha, you're a legal practitioner. I'd like to ask you, uh, the Student Loan Act makes provision for education loan fund and uh, for the student loan. Of course, you know that uh, funding... Uh, with its funding to be drawn from 1% of all profits accruing to the federal government from oil and other mineral taxes, including duties accruing to the federal government from a federal 
inland revenue services among orders. Uh, what are your thoughts exactly about the education loan fund for the student loan? I think it's a, it's a good development. Um, there is no way um, uh, we can reach that um, initial conclusion, but it's a good development. Um, it seeks to solve an existing problem and uh, to bring reprieve to students uh, who would otherwise have had their programs truncated. So it's a good development first. Um, every law presents a policy and um, the idea behind our policy is to address an issue affecting society. So at the policy level, I think it's a very positive introduction um, to our educational environment. Um, there will definitely be issues to deal with. There will be uh, draftsmanship issues uh, and uh, those issues about how they are going to be, how the policy is going to be implemented. But I think that at this initial stage, the law just lays down the policy. Uh, there will be the administrative processes by which greater details, I believe, will be provided uh, to enable things uh, be streamlined. We know the number of special institutions we have. It's not, a, uh, it's not a scheme for every student that every student must take. It's for those who need it. So it shouldn't be too difficult to establish the institutions we have, the legitimacy of students from those institutions, because uh, it shouldn't be a difficult thing to confirm the status of students or studentship of an applicant uh, from the institution that the student claims um, to be applying from. So I think those are issues that can be dealt with as uh, we get about implementation of the policy. But first, uh, one must give kudos to the government for this policy, because I think it's one that uh, is timely, and uh, we have those who need it and who need it badly. So, but, but yes, of course, I, I do appreciate your thoughts on uh, the student loan, but my concern is, is about the funding, the source of funding the student loan, uh, which stipulates about 1% of all profits accruing to the federal government from oil and other mineral resources, uh, taxes, levies. Uh, you also have duties accruing to the federal government from the federal inland revenue, amongst all the sources of revenue to be collected. Now, and especially if you look at the fact that we're grappling and struggling, you know, with revenue generation as a country. So I ask you, do you think that, you know, the source of funding the student loan, is it viable? Is it sustainable? Yes, uh, I, I believe it's, uh, it's viable, it's sustainable. Um, largely because uh, its continuation is not going to uh, rely on a return of what is given out. So if you have an annual budget and um, all the institutions from which, all the segments from which um, this, the uh, loan is supposed to be drawn from, that is the sourcing um, basis of the loan, are functional every year. Why shouldn't it be possible? Um, yes, we do have a lot of issues but I think we we'll have more issues with accounting for what we are raising than whether or not we are raising something. So I believe that um, it's not, it shouldn't affect the possibility of this policy working through and uh, yielding the results that are desired. Well, uh, Tunji, would you like to also share your thoughts on this? Uh, the source of funding this particular loan, especially when we know that, I mean, with revenue generation, we haven't been very great on that. Uh, uh, when you also look at the issue of transparency, corruption in the system. So do you think that um, this would be uh, sustained? Do you think that this sources of revenue, it's capable of funding uh, the student loan? I think, uh, again, I have my doubts because uh, this is how we started the subsidy. And uh, the year after, we see subsidy as a problem to us. This is a, a form of subsidizing a, a education in our country. And this is a way of saying, look, we are trying to help people who don't have uh, money. But to, and uh, we, we, we are not looking at whether to, to sustain it. To me, it may, at the long run, they may even say that the year after, there will be complaint as to the money is too much and people are not paying back and this and that. And then they are not able to get a. Uh, the required source of income to, 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 to fund it thereafter. And people will come back and say, this is our problem, and then we need to remove it again. For me, I, I, don't, even, I don't even think that the source of income is not even the only problem here. That, like, it's, it's a major problem as well. But I, I still have my doubt, and I will still repeat myself, that I, I'm, not, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I know 
I, I, I don't know whether this has been well worked out. Where is our data? The, we talk about uh, it's not difficult to know people who are entitled, who are who are looking for it. It's good. It's difficult. Eighty percent of Nigerians have, are, 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 are poverty. They are, they are, sorry, they are, they are, well, yeah, that, that would be like eighty percent of Nigerians are under poverty level. So in other words, most Nigerians, uh, almost all every household, are, are qualified to be entitled to this uh, 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 student loan. So most students in, in, in uh, 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 will be, majority of them will be. In fact, they will be over overwhelmed by the application they will receive in terms of people who are applying for it. And it will now become uh, who you know. It will now become a myth. We have some people, other people who are put in place to enforce it, to implement the, the program, will now be, be become a multimillionaire in that in that process. I, I think for me, I rather prefer that uh, look, this the education is the, our education system is put in a way in a, in a standard condition that look, you everybody will be willing to say look. Whatever it takes, we are going to look for it and, and, and ensure we, we, are, we are in school. So society that do what we are doing now, ensure the, the, the schools are, are, are put in proper conditions, ensure that things, proper, proper facilities are put in place, and then let's, let's, let's see how it goes. But us saying you'll be giving students loan, to, to me, it's a matter of time, we will complain thereafter mm. about well, how to get the money to finish. Uh, uh, Wakocha, some people believe that uh, with the un unemployment rate estimated at 41% in 2023, uh, it's just a case of putting the cart before the horse. Uh, do you really agree with this school of thought that uh, you, you can't be having unemployment rate this high and not trying to fix, you know, all of these issues? And then you're talking about, uh, you know, student loan, especially when you have a period of delivery for about two years after NYSE. Yeah, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, repayment is an issue that definitely needs uh, some much greater attention. Um, you have problems like um, whether the two years is long enough and two years after what the law says, two years after graduation. Graduation does not guarantee jobs. So everybody knows we have an issue to, to deal with in that area. But but I think um, when you get to the bridge, uh, or before you get to the bridge, you may be able to come up with how you will cross it. But that part of the law needs revisiting. But for me, put the policy in place. It is extremely important that uh, we should talk of employment and think of how to uh, generate enough enough uh, um, employment for those who are coming out of school to be absorbed. But you are not going to have those who are coming out of school waiting until the job is ready. So these are two realities that exist. Should we downplay one? Should we let one suffer while we are trying to fix the other? Should we let all suffer until we have ensured that there is enough work for everybody who is coming out? Because students are going to go into school, students who are going to need assistance or who are going to need um, this kind of assistance, let me call it assistance, uh, which is the loan, a loan facility. They exist and they are going to need it. The fact that we have not made enough job or we have not prepared enough job for when they will come out of school, we will not throw them out of school. They will be there. The need is there. So I think that dealing with an existing need is a positive development. We can fine-tune, now that you have established the policy by enacting a law, we can look at those areas that need revisiting and do what we can about them to ensure that the implementation of that policy moves smoothly. So I do not think that everything should grind to a halt. Uh, both the area of uh, assisting students who need assistance. As I said, I think it's not for every student. Everybody, every student is qualified, but the idea is not that every student in Nigerian tertiary institutions I mean, will go to school <laughs> through the loan. Yeah, yes, of so, course. Uh, that, that might be a yeah. valid point. But um, if you look at the fact that the bill was introduced in 2016 as part of measures towards addressing funding gaps in the country's tertiary education subsector, then one would begin to think that it should have been important to stimulate the economy. I mean, if we say that, he hates, so as much as we agree that, uh, the, the, you know, this bill or the policy, uh, it's okay. But then again, is this not going to impoverish the already poor uh, student? Because there's no guarantee, just like you have said, graduation does not guarantee you having jobs. So why don't we rather stimulate the economy, just like you know this administration uh, during her campaign processes had been saying, we will stimulate the economy. And one is hoping to see that we have a, an economy that's booming, and then we have you know, uh, you know, the population unemployment rate reducing drastically. And then before we talk about this. 
you know, my thinking is that um, this is not done in isolation. A government that is thinking of how to support students who are in need in the university system or in the tertiary system has not concluded its work. You are going to talk about economy, it's going to formulate policy about the economy, stimulating the economy and all that. They have responsibility for all that. But my question is, should other sectors wait until we have concluded work with the economy before we begin to deal with other sectors that are in existence and that possess needs that need to be met? I do not think that the fact that they have come up with this uh, means that they have finished all they have to do and that they will no longer talk about policies to stimulate the economy and all that. This is just an action in the education sector. And it's expected that there will be policies on every sector. And uh, the country is in a bad shape. So this government must come up with, with policies to stimulate all sectors, especially the economy and the other critical sectors that need to be stimulated. That will come up. I do not think that we can argue that, oh, because we haven't seen that happen, that the one of meeting the needs of those who are already in the system and who will need the assistance should not be done. No, I, no, I do no, not but that, think I mean, I, so, I mean, to be realistic, it's important that we look at it in, in, in its real sense. Whether around us, if you look around us, there are a lot of persons who have graduated for, uh, you know, almost a decade and, and, and can't boast of a job. And so sure. then again, uh, what's the essence of then having to say you're trying to help the poor, you're trying to help those who cannot access uh, tertiary, tertiary education or some sort of education, acquire an education based on loan, and at the end of the day, they have a repayment plan or, uh, you know, period, which they're not also able to meet because the jobs are not available. I mean, you could be out of school for uh, only God knows how long without a job. And so, so what exactly, again, are we not putting this person in bondage? Are we rather not worsening their situation? However you look no, at it. No, I think we are not. Unless you are going to argue that we should shut down the schools until we have fixed the economy and provided enough jobs for all who are already... Or, or should, shouldn't we rather be thinking about having, uh, you know, the vocational sector of education, uh, you know, viable? Should, shouldn't we be looking at that other aspect of it rather than the conventional universities? Because it feels like we've been paying more attention to conventional institution. Remember sometime when Good Luck Jonathan was president, a lot of attention was being paid to. Remember how many new universities were approved at the end of the day? So uh, don't we think that it's important that we revive, increase, uh, and, and pay more more attention to vocational uh, institution uh, just to help. You know, that's what I said. I, 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 okay. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. He, he will join in no time. Okay, okay. So that's why I said. This is not the government's policy on education. This, this is just an intervention for students. You don't even have a minister for education yet. You have not started talking of things government has to do in this sector. This is not done in isolation. This is one of several things the government will have to fix in the education sector. And then you have the economy and you have other critical areas that the government has to formulate policy on to fix those areas because they are in bad shape. I, I do not think that the fact that we need to fix those areas will necessitate that intervention for students who already exist should not be done. And we are not shutting down the schools. So even if we say, okay, let's not do this policy. These students are in. They are going to have to meet those needs. Those that will drop out, they drop out. The fact that we have improved the education system will not guarantee that they will have funds to pay the fees. And if we want to wait till everything is fixed, they will graduate whether or not the economy is ready. So I think this is just one of several needs that need to be met. And I believe that meeting that need does not take away government responsibility or its people's or citizens' expectation that government will deal with other critical needs, even in the education sector. Mm. Tunji, uh, do, do you agree with um, uh, Wokocha's uh, thoughts? I, I, I don't agree with some of the position, or his position because, like I said, firstly, I don't believe in a, putting the... Uh, 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 when, you, when you get to a bridge, you cross it and we know what to do. No! When you want to do a proper uh, uh, thing, you want to do things that will, that will give, give you results, you must plan everything ahead. You must know where there's a bridge somewhere, and when we go to that bridge, how do we cross it? 
It's not when you get to the bridge, you now be thinking of what are we going to use? Is it like that we're going to use? Are we going to fly? Are we going to do this and that? You will not be able to, you may be, you may be, ooh, are you going to be able to go again? So for me, I don't believe in the principle of uh, when you get to the bridge, you cross it. That to me, it doesn't work. I, and I want to agree also that, look, the government is putting the, the cart before the horse. Because the, what the government needs to do is to proper foundation. And just like you said, through the economy, let, let's have a working uh, 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 economy. When you have a working economy, people that even apply for no may not even be much. As it is today, the application you will receive, just open the portal today and say people should apply for loan, student loan. The, 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 the site will crash. Because almost everybody will apply for it. Even those who have money. The scholarship that we have, most people don't know today that there's scholarship for Nigerians abroad and, 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 and within. Those scholarships are being taken by people who are in government. So uh, when you come to this particular student loan too, it will come to that level as well. Because uh, people that will apply will be more than the available uh, money. And in that regard, you'll be who you know. And people, and some of them, some of them will even use it and, and say, and connect it to their own, uh, whatever. So as far as I'm concerned, the, the what the government is doing, I appreciate their, their, their thinking. I appreciate that they are trying to look for solutions and a, a, a palliative for students. But for me, that is a palliative that they will not be able to sustain. Because if you look at it, let's assume they are giving 500,000 naira. Let's assume how many students we have in Nigeria in public schools. There are millions. So how, how, much will they be, how much will they pay in a year? It will be, become like a subsidy. We are talking about subsidy because, not because subsidy is, is bad on itself, but because government is not able to deal with people who are, who are, who are committing crime with the subsidy. So what will happen if people who are also committing crime with the student loan, we will say, they will tell us, uh, no, uh, the loan is there, but people are giving to manage it, they are not able to manage it well. And nobody will be punished. And that will be all. And they will fall back again and say, no, we can't continue. We have to, we have to close it again. No, we have to. That, that means you don't plan very well. When you don't plan well, you crash. So you have to do your planning from A to C. A to C. Not that you plan to a middle and say, when you get to that middle, you, you think of what to do again. No, it will not work. And so as far as I'm concerned, the policy may be good on paper. The implementation, just like I know as a Nigerian, I've been in Nigeria for over 40 years. And I know at the teacher, I've, since my primary school, I've been hearing it will be better. It will be better. Let's just manage it. Let's just sacrifice. We have been doing that. Nothing has is happening. Nobody is punished. For, for not doing the right thing. So as far as I'm concerned, people will see you this thing as a, as, as a means of getting money, becoming a millionaire, and nothing will happen to them. Those who are given a responsibility of implementing it, implementing it, will become rich. People who are rich will also to apply for that loan, student loan that we're talking about, and they will get it. People who, are, who need the money most will not get it. And the, 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 the government may not even be able to continue thereafter. That is my worry. So it, it appears we are just rushing into doing it. Just like what we're, we're, we're doing. So we need to do proper, lay proper foundation. And the proper foundation is to provide an economy that is, working, that is working. When you have an economy that is working, people will not depend majorly on the government to provide everything for them or subside everything for them. People, people are ready to pay tax and, uh, and, uh, and pay whatever tax in the, in, in, uh, abroad because they see what the government is doing with their money and they see that, look, this money is working and the economy is good. But here in Nigeria, you can't ask me to sacrifice when I don't see what the government is doing. And those, those in government that ask me to sacrifice are not sacrificing. They are, they, are, they, are, they are asking me to tighten my bed, and they are losing their own beds. So, as far as I'm concerned, my worry is about corruption in, this, in our system. The corruption in our system may not allow it to work. Like I, I repeat again, it's a very good policy on paper. The implementation is my worry. Well, um, we move away from that. We already know that some persons uh, of this uh, thoughts that it probably would be better to talk about scholarship at this point in time rather than having loans, because when you talk about loan, loans should be for profit uh, purposes where you grant loans to businesses and what have you. Then again, Wokocha, uh, according to the Act, all students, we're talking about the requirement at this point, all students who have secured admission into any public Nigerian university or polytechnics, colleges of education, or any technical uh, vocational education and training, uh, school can apply for the loan. It's one of the requirements. There's also an act that stipulates that students' income or families' income must uh, not be less than 500,000 naira per annum to be qualified for it. Amongst others, again, I ask, do you, uh, what do you make of the conditions for the student loan? Do you think that um, the set of people, the caliber of persons that this particular act intends to meet will actually meet at the end of the day, looking at all of the requirements? Well, first, um, those conditions you have just read out or mentioned indicate that this policy targets those who will have difficulty with meeting 
the requirements of education, which is the fees um, and, and the other necessary uh, requirements for going through the tertiary institution. Uh, it's aimed at the low income based uh, sector, not the upper income uh, uh, sector. Now, whether or not it's going to work, it's going to be a matter of implementation, as I said. Now, we will have the concerns we have first. How does the government determine the income base of um, a student whose parents are farmers? The fact that they are farmers does not necessarily mean that they can't have an income base that exceeds what government uh, has talked about. But, I mean, student's loan is a policy that has existed for hundreds of years and exists in other countries of the world, the United States of America and the UK and all that. So it's not, we, are not, we are not reinventing the wheel. We have issues. We have horrible experiences. But I think starting a new government is like starting each day. And I think we must find the faith uh, and the conviction to compel our government that things move in a different manner from what our experience has been. We must also take away the fact that this government is not one month old yet uh, in office. And uh, whether we can conclude that what we experienced under the last government will be exactly the same thing we will experience under this government is what we are yet um, to come across. So at the moment, we must have that faith that perhaps this government intends to do things differently. And without waiting for it to decide to do things differently, as stakeholders and as citizens, we should point out the flaws, we should point out the things that need attention, and persuade our government to take the steps that need to be taken. A policy can be good, implementation could raise problems, but it's easier to amend an existing law than to make a new one. So I think, despite the challenges that exist, if we are determined to make it work and not just sitting back as citizens uh, to watch government go on with this normal jamboree, but if we take steps as active stakeholders, I, I, I'm happy that uh, ASU and uh, even those students, uh, some students are not happy about it, but stakeholders like ASU and other uh, bodies are part of the administration of this, of this uh, policy. So I am happy about that. I am willing to give it a trial and to give the government the um, required support that it requires uh, to do what it has told us it wants to do. But I'm not going to sit back and watch them do it. I'm going to be an active citizen and I'm going to make necessary interventions and deploy all manner of uh, instruments for persuading my government to ensure that the policy is realized because the policy is positive and is designed for a sector that needs it. So it's not just a question of my sitting back to dream or think or have it. I have a responsibility to make it work too. I may not be one who will have to benefit from, from it. Yes, I'm in the education sector, but we have a responsibility as citizens to make the country work and to draw our government's attention to what needs to be done. I, I may be wrong, but something gives me the impression that this government may not be exactly the same with the government that handed over to it. And I'm willing to give it that trial. Well, fingers are crossed, and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians are anticipating. Uh, I, I wish we had more time, you know, to talk about uh, the fact that you would also have those who, just like you, you have mentioned, I think uh, you mentioned that, or Tunji mentioned, uh, those who should not be concerned with this particular loan, uh, those who have no business in applying for this loan, finding a way, uh, schemas, you know, trying to get the loan. Uh, with all of the requirements, do you think that that can uh, be controlled or curtailed? It probably would have been another question, but then again, we're out of time. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the show. We've been speaking with uh, Tunji Abdulhamid. Uh, Tunji, thank you so much for being uh, part of the show this evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And then thank we you, also have been speaking with Richard Wokocha, well, who's a professor. Uh, Lord it's a great pleasure. Thank you so come. much. We'll, well, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll, we'll take a look at the conversation we had yesterday on the President's Democracy Day speech. Please stay with us.